So you wanna become a network engineer in 2025. Whether you're starting from scratch or looking to level up, I'm gonna show you the exact roadmap to break into this career without wasting time on things that don't matter. Warning, you don't need a four year degree, you don't need to memorize thousands of commands, and you definitely don't need to spend years stuck in help desk before moving up. What you do need is the right mix of skills, certifications, and real world experience. And in this video, I'm gonna break it all down. Let's get started here and now. Step one, learn the basics. All right, before you start configuring routers and switches, you need to understand the fundamentals of networking. This is where most people get stuck because they try to jump straight into CLI commands without actually knowing what's happening behind the scenes. Don't do that. Instead, here is the absolute essentials you need to know before touching any hardware or software. First, learn the OSI model and TCP IP. The OSI model is the foundation of networking. If you don't understand how data moves from one layer to another, you'll struggle troubleshooting later on. You don't need to memorize every detail, but know the difference between layer two switching and layer three routing. Also, most real world common networking is based on the TCP IP model, so focus more on that. Subnetting is one of the biggest struggles for beginners, but once you get it, everything clicks. You need to know how to divide networks into smaller ones and why that matters for performance and security. Then there's VLANs. These help to segment traffic inside of a network. Think of them as lanes on a highway, keeping things organized. Networking runs on protocols. And if you don't understand what they do, troubleshooting will be a nightmare. So here are some of the common ones. DNS converts domain names to IPs. DHCP, which assigns IP addresses automatically. BGP, OSPF, and EIGRP are routing protocols that help data find its best path. HTTPS and HTTP, as well as FTP and SSH, are common application layer protocols you'll deal with. Now, you don't need to be an expert on all these, but knowing how they work will make your life so much easier when configuring these large, complex networks. The best part? You don't need to pay thousands of dollars for a degree to learn this stuff. Here are the best free resources to get you started. Number one, Cisco Networking Academy. It's CCNA level content for free. Next, Professor Messer on YouTube, great network plus concepts. And practical labs such as Cisco Packet Tracer and Wireshark are all free and you can get started today with any of these resources. Step two, get certified. Now that you understand the basics, let's talk about certifications. Do you need one to become a network engineer? No, but does it make your life easier when applying for jobs? Absolutely. Certifications prove that you know your stuff, especially if you don't have a degree or prior experience. Employers use them as a quick way to filter candidates. Think of them like a passport. They won't land you the job themselves, but they'll get your foot in the door. And if you want a job in networking, the CCNA or CompTIA Net Plus are hands down the best beginner certifications. They cover switching, routing, security, and even some automation. The CCNA is vendor specific to Cisco and Net Plus is vendor neutral. And I know there's a whole debate on where to start and which to pursue. I think if you already have some knowledge of networks and how they work, CCNA will be a better certification since the complexity is a little higher. And if you have no knowledge of networking or just want to start off a little easier, NetPlus is a safe choice. At the time of this video, the CCNA is $300 US and NetPlus is 369. Either way, both can be passed without needing any years of networking, engineering, or degrees from prestigious universities. The key point is start somewhere. All right, so which study materials actually work? Here's what I recommend. For CCNA, Neil Anderson's CCNA Udemy course is really the best value for beginners. There's also the Cisco Networking Official CCNA book. It's dry but thorough, and the Packet Tracer Labs are hands-on practice for free. For NetPlus, Professor Messer's YouTube channel is a great place to start, and it's completely free. And the CompTIA NetPlus all-in-one book by Mike Myers is world-renowned and is awesome. And as well as Jason Dean's NetPlus training, 
Again, all these resources will be linked in the description so you can check them out yourselves. But the key point is, look at a certification, see what fits your use case best, and just get started. Step three, hands-on skills. Okay, so you've got the three down and maybe even a certification or two, but here's the truth. Nobody's hiring you just because you pass an exam. You need hands-on experience. And in 2025, there are more ways than ever to get it without needing a job. A hiring manager isn't just gonna ask you if you passed your CCNA or your Net Plus. They're gonna ask you, have you configured VLANs? Have you troubleshooted DHCP issues or worked with real hardware? That's why the next step is actually building and configuring networks. So when you get to an interview, you can say, yeah, I've done that before. Now there are a couple options. Option one is build a home lab. And this is really best for real world experiences interacting with real hardware. If you can afford it, a physical home lab is really the best way to go. You'll get comfortable with setting up switches, routers, firewalls, just like you would in a real enterprise environment. And here's some of the best hardware for beginners to pick up. You can get a Cisco Catalyst 2960 or 3750 for around 50 bucks on eBay, a Cisco ISR 2900 series around 100 bucks on eBay, an Extreme G2 Layer 3 switch, which we have a couple of and we love them, around 200 bucks on eBay. You can pick up a Juniper EX 4300 series, it's around 100 bucks on eBay, and of course you'll need a Unify access point for around 50 to 100 bucks used. You'll also need to self-host the controller for that or get a cheap cloud key to kind of manage all the Unify access points. And a bonus, if you want to dabble in some security, you can get a Palo Alto 820 used for around 100 bucks on eBay, and honestly that's really a steal. These devices should really enable you to build an amazing foundation for network engineering. But if you don't want to spend money on hardware, don't worry, there is another way. That leads us to our second option, using a virtual lab. This is really best for budget and flexibility. If you don't want to buy physical equipment, you can build an entire lab on your computer using virtual tools. A couple of these are Cisco Packet Tracer, which is really good for CCNA beginners, GNS3, which is best for real world setups and kind of advanced configurations, and EVNG or EVENG, which is more powerful and used in professional environments. The pros are the software is free, scalable, and doesn't really require physical equipment. The only cons are sometimes it requires a pretty decent PC and some features you honestly need real hardware to fully emulate. If you're serious about networking though, just start using any one of these tools daily, whether it's physical or virtual, and just treat it like a real job. Step four, land an entry-level IT job. All right, so you've got the knowledge, maybe a certification and some hands-on experience, but now it's time to get paid for it. But here's the truth. Most people get stuck here because they don't know which jobs to apply for or how to stand out in the hiring process. Let's fix that. Your first IT job doesn't have to be perfect. The goal is to start somewhere and move up as fast as possible. The sooner you get real world experience, the faster you'll get into a network engineering role. So which job should I apply for? Well, here's what I recommend. Number one, help desk technician. It's really the easiest to get and it's great for beginners. It's really the most common starting point for many network engineers and you'll troubleshoot basic network issues, reset passwords and deal with users. The downside, it's not super hands-on with networking, but it does build IT experience. Number two, knock technician. This is best for networking exposure. The Network Operations Center, or NOC techs, monitor network infrastructure, troubleshoot outages, escalate issues. It's really a great stepping stone if you want to get straight into networking. Next would be like an ISP technician. This is best for hands-on work. Working for an ISP or an internet service provider means installing routers, running cables, troubleshooting customer issues. You'll get hands-on and real-world networking experience. Number four would kind of be like an IT support slash field tech, and this is really great for learning a multitude of hardware and software. You'll configure routers, troubleshoot connections, sometimes work directly with the clients and networking equipment themselves, 
and really just give you a holistic, well-rounded IT-based knowledge. Any of these roles will give you real-world experience that sets you up for network engineering, but let's talk about how to actually get hired. Step one would be optimize your resume. Your resume should scream, I understand network engineering. Even if you've never had an IT job before, highlight your home lab, certifications, and personal projects. Step two would be to use LinkedIn or IT social communities. Most IT jobs aren't super publicized, so you'll kind of need to be on LinkedIn and Discord groups and Reddit communities kind of scouring postings as they pop up. And networking in IT isn't just about cables. It's about connecting people with others and opportunities will come. Step three, apply the right way. Don't just click easy apply. The worst thing you can do is just blindly apply to 50 jobs with a generic resume. Instead, do this. Find a job listing, look up the hiring manager on LinkedIn, send a quick message, then apply. Something as simple as, hey, so-and-so, I saw you posting for an IT support role, and I'm really interested. I've been working on my networking skills, recently got my CCNA, I would love to connect. The extra 30 seconds goes a long way. Once you land your first IT job role, don't settle. Your goal is to move up into a networking role as soon as possible. Most people stay stuck in entry-level roles for years, but if you keep growing, you can move up as quick as 12 to 18 months. Landing your first IT job is a game changer. Once you're in gaining real-world experience, networking becomes so much easier. Next, let's talk about how to keep advancing and reach that full network engineering role. Step five, gain real world experience. All right, so you just landed your first IT job. Awesome. But here's where most people go wrong. They get comfortable and they stop learning. If you wanna actually become a network engineer, you need to start gaining real world experience as fast as possible. Then let's talk about how to actually do that. Here's the harsh truth. Hiring managers don't care how many certs you have if you've never actually built or troubleshoot a real network. Certifications get you in the door, but experience gets you promoted. So how do you get that experience if you're just starting? Here's what I recommend. Number one, volunteer for networking tasks. Even if your job doesn't strictly require it, ask to shadow the networking team next time they're installing a new switch or cabling up another rack. Next would be keep studying and home labbing. Just because you got your role in your job doesn't mean you need to stop there. Continue to grind and learn on the side. Next would be to certify and specialize. CCNP, firewall certs, SDN, and cloud skills will really bring you a long way to kind of specializing in a specific area. You can also get community-based experience by contributing to an open source-based project or do freelance work on the side. Either way, I always recommend you make yourself an online portfolio of all the things that you're doing so others can see. Most people don't fully understand technology, but to truly excel in your craft, like many others, it has to become a lifestyle. Mastering your skills requires consistent effort both on the job and in your own time. And before you know it, you'll have enough skill and experience and education to fully apply and become a network engineer. So that's it. The complete roadmap to becoming a network engineer in 2025. If you follow these steps, you can go from a beginner role to landing a full-time network engineering role in around 12 to 24 months. So to recap, here's what you need to start doing today. First, learn the fundamentals. Master the OSI model, subnetting, VLANs, and routing basics. This will help get that base knowledge of what networking really is in place. Then, get certified. Start studying for your CCNA, NetPlus, or any cloud-specific networking search that might pique your interest, as long as it's something in the networking field. Then, build those hands-on skills. Set up a home lab, use like GNS3, EVNG, anything. Just practice real-world networking tasks. Then, land that entry-level IT job. Uh, apply for a help desk, knock tech, ISP technician roles, just to get your foot in the door. Then gain real-world experience. Volunteer for those networking tasks at work, 
take on some freelance projects, or contribute to open source tools. Then you can level up and specialize. Advance to that CCNP and position yourself for high paying roles. The best network engineers aren't just clocking in and out. They're constantly learning, testing, and growing their skills. Now, I wanna hear from you guys. What step are you on? Are you just getting started or are you already working in IT and just looking to level up? Drop a comment below and thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.